Creations. This is episode 66. If you're having your morning coffee, and I know some of you have shared that you are, hello, good morning. It's Saturday, well, it's Saturday morning for you, but I'm filming this Friday night uh, because it takes me time to edit so that it's up and running for Saturday. So I hope you all have had a good week. I've had a great one. Um, my husband and I are celebrating our 36th anniver- wedding anniversary on Monday. So um, we went shopping today because today's Friday and I work on Monday. So my husband knows I love Ikea. I love the organizing. I drive him crazy with the organizing stuff, but I love the organizing stuff. But it's like a little over an hour away for us to get to the nearest Ikea. Anyway, he took me down there today and I got, we bought a couple things for around the house because I like their dishcloths and stuff like that. Um, but I wanted some place to be able to store my works in progress because the, the craft room you see here is actually upstairs and that's where all my yarn and everything is stored. But when I'm working on knitting projects and things, I'm sitting downstairs in our living room. So, and I might in one night work on two or three different projects. I might work for, you know, a half hour on one and a half hour on another. They all end up stuffed in a project bag and sitting at my feet and become a giant tripping hazard. Um, My husband and I both have fallen over them and we don't need any help. So anyway, my whole idea was to get a little like cubicle shelf that I can put my projects on that I'm working on so that they're not all over the floor. So, um, our house has like a, a living room and it has an eat-in kitchen and then it has a dining room, which we don't use as a dining room because we have a big eat-in kitchen. And so it's kind of like an, a catch-all room. It's, it's a music room. It's a office. It's, yeah, it's got all kinds of stuff stored in there. So it now has my works in progress shelf stored in there too. So I'm not going to put that in a tour of that this episode because this episode is going to be long as it is, but I am going to put it in an episode for next week. So, uh, I mean, not next week, I'm going to put it in an episode midweek. So look for it around Tuesday or Wednesday. I will give you a little tour once I finish getting it all set up. So it's, it's most of the way there. We spent the evening building it. So that's why I'm filming a little late. If it looks a little dark back here, it's because it's like quarter of eight in the evening on Friday night. So anyway, enough talking. I will get on to what's going on. We have um, my works in progress. We have my poncho and I've done a bit on the poncho this week. There is, um, there is my stitch marker from last week. So I've knit across here. So there you can see the whole thing. So I've been working on that. I really want to get this one done so I can actually wear it before it's too warm. Um, Although right now it's freezing outside and they're talking about snow on Sunday. So who knows? Then I've got my On the Spice Market and I've been really working on this. This is for my mother for Christmas next year. I'm planning way ahead, but um, there's my stitch marker there. So it's going across here. And I think I'm at a, about 170 some stitches across. So here it is. Huh, almost matches my shirt. Look at that. Pretty close. Some of the reds in it. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm almost done with this section. I think I have maybe one, one more little set of these these little colored things, and then the bottom half goes back to the striping. So um, I'm getting there on it, but uh, yeah, I've been working on that. I've worked on my hitchhiker as well, and my hitchhiker is entering, I'm going to, I'm entering my On the Spice Market on the, um, Craft House Magic Podcast has a Christmas knit-along going on right now, and so I'm going to enter that one. And then this hitchhiker, I've done a lot on the hitchhiker this week, 
and the original Hitchhiker scarf does not have eyelets in here. I just thought it made it look pretty. Just to, I got bored doing the same pattern, so I threw some in. So there's some eyelets in here. So I knit from here up to here. And there's where it looks like. And it has like this little sawtooth, kind of a sawtoothed edge you can see right here. And then I have two sections so far of the um, eyelets. And I'll put some more as I go on. I'll just kind of space them evenly throughout. But um, so far I'm liking this yarn. I will say it's not the softest. It reminds me of some Noro I've used before. Or not Noro. It reminds me of Lopi in some ways. It's a single spun. I mean, it feels soft in the ball, but when you feel it here, it, it's... It's okay, but it's not soft, soft like a merino or anything like that. So it is a single ply yarn. So there's that. Then we come to the socks. Now I gave you, if you watched, there was a midweek progress on the socks, and it will put put a card up. You see the little letter I. If you click on that, it'll take you to that little midweek episode where I showed you my progress. At that point I had just the cuffs done. So I'll show you where I'm at with all four. I still have a favorite and it's the one that I'm most familiar with. And I've got yarn jumping all over the place and major tangle ups at this point. They all tangled up with my On the Spice Market. Pardon me. I'm back. The yarn all fell on the floor. This is what happened. It went like everywhere and got tangled around all my other projects. So yeah. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> this is my nine inch circulars. I'm at the same point on all of my socks at this point. I'm trying to do them evenly so I can um, just really be able to feel out the, uh, how I like it. I don't know. Anyway, these are, these are the nine inch circulars. This is where the cuff ends. And so I've done three repeats of the pattern. You can see the little waffling. Here's one, two, and three. This is my favorite. I like the metal needles and I can go pretty fast on these. So these I like. Then there is This is what happens when you have four skeins of yarn and they're all, they're all sticking to each other. Anyway, here we go. This is my double pointed needles and I'm at the same spot with them. And as you can see, the tension on these is pretty much, oops, let me hold on this. The tension seems to be pretty much the same, which is good since they're going to be a pair. Um, but I will say, when you look at them this direction, this looks tighter. Maybe one of my feet is smaller than the other. We can hope. Um, but it might stretch out a little bit too. But the tension in the stitches looks pretty much, pretty much the same. Then we come to the two at a time. Now, I told you last week I was directionally challenged. Boy, was I not kidding. Um, the other night I got partway through and realized I was knitting continuously on one side of the sock. I kept forgetting what direction I was going and had to take them off the needles, grab some double pointed needles, get them back so both sets of socks were at the same place and then put them back on the needles again. So I solved the problem. Now, don't have anything in your mouth when I tell you this because you might spit it out laughing at me. Um, I'm technologically challenged apparently, so this is my high-tech way of keeping track of my socks. One stitch marker for sock number one. Two stitch markers for sock number two. When I turn it over, three stitch markers for sock side number three. And we have four stitch markers for sock side number four. 
This way, I know that I am not going to be knitting. I was literally knitting back and forth here. I had one sock completely off the needles. It was hanging onto one needle and was just the loop was just hanging loosely. I have no clue how I did that, but um, this is my least favorite way of knitting socks. I will say that my tension is the tightest with this, probably because it's really stressing me out. There's a reason why I don't do this, and I probably never will again. Um, I mean, I can see how it would be fast, and it keeps you from having second sock syndrome, which is when you finish one sock and you really don't want to go back and finish the other one. But um, I keep getting this, the yarn caught, like, in between here, and then I have to thread the yarn up through the middle of it. I don't know. I'm just not real coordinated with doing two at a time. But I'm bound and determined I'm going to finish this this way. So I'm getting ready for the heel flaps on all of these socks because these are all just like anklet socks. They're not going all the way up my leg. This would drive me crazy if I had to do this all the way up. I think I would go absolutely nuts. Um, so I'm getting ready for the heel flaps. So hopefully for next week I will have the heel flaps done on this or I might be insane from trying to do the heel flaps on these. Just saying. it's This is just not going really well. So that's my project. And my hands are like really dried out, so all the yarn is sticking to me. It's, yeah, they're like really clingy right now. So, yeah, that was fun. Anyway, to move on to fun object, fun items, a lot of the podcasters have been talking about their make nine for the year, uh, whether it's with sewing or whatever craft it is. So I thought I would share with you what, I came up with what my Make 9 are. Some of those are projects I'm already working on, like my Hitchhiker. Um, I want to finish my Hitchhiker. I want to finish my Drakenfels, which I started when we went on vacation back in September, and it hasn't seen the light of day since. Um, I put it away so I could concentrate on other projects. Never got back to it. So um, I want to finish that. I want to finish all four of these socks um, or die trying, but I'm going to finish all four of these socks one way or the other. I want to finish the poncho that I'm working on. So far it doesn't sound like I'm, I'm stretching myself too much because these are projects I've already got going, but I really want to finish these projects before I start anything else because it's just getting a little too much. Um, I do want to make a cotton sweater. I have some yarn to make cotton, or to, I have some cotton yarn to make a sweater with, so I want to do that, but I'm going to wait till I get all these other projects off the decks and finished. I want to make a Mobius. A Mobius is kind of like a, a capelet, it's, or if you took a, an oversized cowl and put it over your shoulders, it kind of hangs off of your shoulders, just like a, like a shoulder warmer type of thing, and a lot of times, most Mobiuses have like a twist in them. So I want to work on a Mobius. I have some small amounts of cotton yarn that I would like to make like a cowl with or some kind of neck thing with. Um, I don't, ha most of my shawls and everything are all out of wool. So when it comes to the summertime, I don't have that many things in cotton to wear. So I have bought some cotton in the last year or so, I've bought some different things. I haven't made anything with them yet. Um, so that's one of my goals, is to make some things I can wear in the summertime that are in cotton that won't be too hot. So I want to do that. I would like to make a sweater with some color work. I have done a Fair Isle sweater. Well, actually, I've done a couple of Fair Isle sweaters before, but it's been many, many years ago. So I would like to do that. And I would like to finish a sweater that I started back when I began podcasting, and I'm going to show you what that is. It's called the Barton Cardigan, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is from this book. It's called Knitting Plus. Um, I bought it off of, I think it was Amazon, so it was a used library book. Uh, let's see, where did it come from? San Mateo County. Sounds like, I think that's, I think that's California. Anyway, it was a former library book. It is for plus size. All the sweaters that are in here are for plus size women. And it does have some summer like t-shirt type of, of cotton sweater. So I might use one of the patterns in here for the cotton sweater. But here is what the Barton cardigan looks like. 
and you can see it is all cables. It doesn't have buttons. These are just like little frog closures that are on it, but it is an absolutely gorgeous pattern, and if you go to, um, here's the back of it, if you go to Ravelry, you can see other people have done it in other colors. Oops, go this direction. There you go. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I started this project, and I'll show you how far I got. I originally started this on wooden needles, and I hated it, and I changed it because it just, this is a very rustic wool, and so it's it doesn't slide real easy. So once I changed over to some metal needles, I liked it a lot better because it, it doesn't have as much drag on it. Um, and this is a sweater that has steaking in it. Now, if you don't know what steaking is, this is where the front opening will be. If you see right across here, where it's just plain stockinette stitch, when I finish the sweater, you actually cut right down through here, and then you seam this. You pull it back and you bind it, and that is what becomes the edge of your sweater. So when I get to that point, we will steak together. I will show it to you. But here is my sweater so far. I can't open it up all the way because it will fall off the needles. But here's what it looks like. And you can see how far I got before I kind of put it away. Thankfully, I marked on here what row I was on. Otherwise, I'd be up a creek because it's been over a year since I worked on this. But I really do want to finish it because it is a gorgeous, gorgeous sweater. So... There is the pattern. It's one of those sweaters where it's intense knitting. You can't, you can't do anything. Well, there's yarn stuck to me again. I just threw the project right on the floor. Um, it's one of those projects where you have to pay a lot of attention because you have a separate, it's all charted, and you have a chart for the left side front, a chart for the right side front, a chart for the back, a chart for a gusset that goes along this, you can't see this part, but a gusset that goes along the side um, that kind of comes in like this because it flares out a little bit at the hips, so the sides kind of come in a little bit. So it has a separate chart for that, so you're constantly flipping back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those patterns where you can't be doing anything else, so it's very intense knitting, which is why I kind of put it away because I did it for a while, and then it was like it was a little overwhelming, had to put it aside, and then I forgot about it. So, um, yeah, I want to get back to it. I want to finish it. So, um, our sock along. I talked about our socks and completely forgot to talk about our sock along. We are on week five of the sock along. Today, we are the, this is the last tutorial for the sock along, and it is on the toes. So I'm going to insert that right here. So what you're going to do, you are going to, on the first round, knit across what would be needle one or to your first marker. So you're going to knit the 12 stitches across. Needle number two or the next portion of your nine inch circulars, you're going to move your marker. And across the pattern section, you are going to knit one, then you are going to knit two together through the back loop, which we've done before, then you are going to knit across to the last three stitches, Once you get to these last three stitches, you're going to knit two together and knit one. So we'll do that. And then needle number three, or your last section, you are going to knit straight across to the end. This would complete round number one of the toe. 
round number two of the toe, you are going to simply knit all of the stitches all the way around. So we'll do that next. We've now completed round two by just simply knitting all the way around on our, on our needles. So we are now going to begin round number three. Round number three, you are going to knit across to the last three stitches on needle one or before your marker. Once you have these three stitches, you are going to knit two together through the back loop. Knit one. Slip your marker or move to needle two. You are going to knit one, knit two together through the back loop. These are all decrease rows, so row two is just um, a knit row, but row three is where your decrease rows will go. So you've knit one, knit two together through the back loop, knit across on needle two to the last three stitches or to the last three stitches before the marker. When you get to the last three stitches on needle two, you're going to knit two together. Knit one. Slip your marker or move to needle three. You're going to knit the first stitch. Knit two together through the back loop. And knit across the third needle or to your beginning loop again. You are going to continue doing round two and round three until needles one and three or your beginning and ending sections have eight stitches on each. So needle number one or section number one is going to have eight stitches. Needle number three or your last section will have eight stitches. At this point you have finished the rows two, rounds two and rounds three until you have eight stitches on the first portion or needle number one. Needle number two, which is where your pattern is, if you're on your, if you're using circulars, it's where the pattern is, you will have 16 stitches. And needle number three, or the last portion, you will also have eight stitches. You can see the decreases when you look at them you can see the edging right here, how it's starting to go in to form your toe on each side. You can see that there. You now are going to only do round number three, and you will do it four more times until you have four stitches on needles one and needles three, or the beginning and the end, and you will have eight stitches total on needle number two or the pattern section. I have now completed the toe and needles one or sections one and three or needles one and three each have, as you can see, four stitches. The center pattern section has only eight. Now this is where double pointed needles actually have the advantage over circular needles. As you can see, I have a lot of slack. So as I was knitting, I was really having to push my stitches around. Um, in order to keep them tight because you want to make sure you do stay snug along this edge or you'll have loose loose toes. So what you're going to do now, you have two options. You can either bind all your stitches off and do the Kitchener stitch or you can do what I'm going to do which is a three needle bind off. Now in order to do that I'm going to remove the beginning marker I'm going to knit 
four stitches. This will take me to the side of the sock where the pattern begins. And again, it is it is a little difficult to do this with the circulars. This is definitely a, an advantage of your double pointed needles. But you are going to knit these four stitches. And you're knitting these four stitches onto needle three. You're going to completely remove needle number two if you are on DPNs. You're going to remove this stitch marker. So now you are down to the front and the back of your sock. As you can see here, I still have this stitch marker in. Um, it's going to come off when I get to that portion. So you would be at this point with just two needles. I'm going to use scissors and I'm going to cut a good length of a tail here. I'm going to turn the socks inside out. Gently bring my needles through here so I don't lose any stitches. There we go. And here's my tail. And then if you're using double pointed needles, you are just going to grab an extra one of your needles. If you're not, you're going to need a spare needle. Um, of close to the same size as what you're dealing with, um, whatever size you knitted your socks with. Just grab an extra, it doesn't have to be an exact size, just something small. I have another set of circulars. And what you're going to do is you are going to put your two ends together. This is your front and your back of your sock. You're going to pick up the first stitch on the front needle the first stitch on the back needle, wrap the, the thread around the back, and then come through the back needle and the front needle, and move that stitch off. Then you're going to go into the next, the second stitch in the front, the second stitch in the back bring both stitches through as you can see I have two stitches left on this right hand needle and just as you would with any bind off you're going to bring the stitch that is furthest to the right and bring it over the stitch that is in the front like that and then you're going to do the next two stitches you're going to go through the front through the back knit the two stitches together pull them off that side and you're going to bring the loop from this furthest away over the one to the top and you're going to continue doing this till you're down to the last two stitches and here we are at the last two stitches we're going to, or the last stitch, we're going to go through the front, go through the back, bring it, the stitch through. You're going to remove your needles and just lift this last stitch 
put over the top. You now have one stitch left on the needle. You're just going to remove it, tie it off. In my case, I just do this. I just spin it and pull it through the loop and pull it snugly. Weave this tail in. Clip the excess and flip your sock right side out. And your sock is completed. Here is the finished toe. This is what it looks like where it's either Kitchenered or or um, three needle, as I did the three needle bind off, but this is what the toe looks like. And this is the toe where it is in pattern. And congratulations, you have finished your first pair of socks. Now on to the next one. Now, if you would like to participate in our sock along, you just have to knit a pair of socks. We're knitting the Blueberry Waffle Sock, which is what all of these little critters are, and the ones I'm wearing on my feet right now. I'm wearing my Blueberry Waffle Socks. Um, so, yeah, that's the socks that we're doing, but you are welcome to join in and knit any pair of socks that you would like. You just have to post a picture in our Ravelry group, which is Katrina's Creations, Post a picture of your completed socks and tell me something about them. The winner will be drawn on March 3rd, so the, the sock along runs till the end of February. And on March 3rd, I will draw a winner, and the winner will receive a pattern of their choice up to $6 off of Ravelry. Now, in order to enter and to post, you have to be a Ravelry member. I think most everybody knows what Ravelry is, but I'll tell you a little bit about it just in case. It is a free website that if you're looking for patterns, they've got them. And they have they have patterns that you can pay for, but they also have thousands and thousands of patterns that are for free. And you can go in and you can click whether you're looking for knitting patterns, crochet patterns, sock patterns, hat patterns, scarf patterns, shawl patterns, whatever kind of pattern you're looking for, what you want to pay for it, whether it's crochet, whether it's knitting, and then it pops up to all different options. You can even plug it in by what type of yarn you've got, and they can show you different projects that have been made with that particular yarn. So it's a lot of fun, um, and like I said, it's free, doesn't cost anything, but in order to be in part of the sock along, you do have to be a Ravelry member to do it. Um, and because that's if you would win, that's where the prize will come from. And I can't post for you because I'm just not, I, I can't do it. <laughs> um, you would have to register for, for yourself. Now we're getting to our show and tell time. Um, Yoka posted some pictures, I think it was last week or early this week, I'm not sure which one. Um, but she posted some pictures of some hot pads that she had run across. Um, you know, like oven mitt, uh, not, not the mitts, but the pads themselves for lifting hot pots and stuff out. And so she posted one. One's a, one's a crochet and one is a knitted uh, hot pad. And it was funny when she posted one, I think it's called Grandma's pot, Hot Pads, something like that. My grandmother had some identical to what was in the picture. It was so funny. I saw those and I remember those when I was a kid. They were, um, and I am going to post a picture right in here. My grandmother had them. They were made out of like the the yarn, the, the cotton yarn that you make doilies out of. And she had them in like cream and blue or cream and I think she had cream and green and cream and blue. I don't remember any red ones, but I remember the, the other two colors because she made my aunt some doll clothes out of the leftovers. She crocheted. She did mostly crocheting. She didn't knit. She did crocheting. Um, and she did all the fancy doilies and stuff like that. But I do remember some hot pads like that. So that was a little nostalgia that brought back. I, like I said, I remembered that when I was a kid. And then Kathy posted a picture of a shawl that she made. It's put out by uh, Lion Brand. It's called their Shawl in a Ball. And the colorway she used was called Community Coral. Now, she said she didn't care much for it, but I actually thought it looked pretty. Um, the funny thing is, is I was telling her, 
a while back when I saw the shawl in a balls advertised, I was looking for some because I liked the one that was done in like a teal color. And I couldn't find them anywhere in any of the stores around here. I checked like Joann's and stuff, couldn't find them. You had to get them online. Um, so, but I didn't. And I've got other stuff I just bought in teal. So, but anyway, um, I'm going to post a picture of Kathy's shawl. And then Kathy sent me something in the mail. So I thought I would share this with you all. First, here's the little card it came with. This is a little, little sparkly cardinal. And there is a bumblebee on the other side. And then she sent me this. This is the card. I'm not going to share the message inside because it was a little more personal. And she sent me some tea. This is vanilla spice. I will be drinking this while I'm editing because it sounds really good. So, um, yeah, I am a tea drinker. I love the smell of coffee, especially caramel coffee. I can't stand the taste of coffee. I do like tiramisu. That's the only way I like coffee. But, um, and I like coffee ice cream, but I don't like coffee. Anyway, there was also a stitch marker in here. Let's see if you can see little purple jewel, and then it says joy. There you can see it. And this is one of those stitch markers. I haven't had one of these before. They're, they're kind of like an earring. They open and close here. So you can use them as a progress keeper or as a stitch marker. So she sent me that. And then she sent me a sheep. A sheep. Now, if you saw the Facebook posting, she had posted some that she had made. So this is one of them. And this is Shirley, the sheep. And there's a reason I named her Shirley. It's because there's Shirley, and here's goodness, and yarn just fell on the floor again. It's the, it's the day of dropping. Oh, and a sheep just fell over. Goodness just did a nosedive. Here we go. We have Shirley, goodness, and here's mercy. Yes, so we have, get it, Shirley, goodness, and mercy. Yeah, and their sheep, shall they follow me? Huh? Yeah, I know. Pun intended, it was really a bad joke. But anyway, I think he is absolutely, or she, Shirley's a she. I think she's absolutely adorable. Who's little itty-bitty feet on her? So, yes, that is Shirley the sheep. She's made out of a pom-pom, and these are little mini, this is real tiny mini pom-poms. And this is a little pom-pom, and then this is a bigger pom-pom. So, thank you so much, Kathy. I had to open it in front of my husband. He was like, I was like, you got to see what I got. So, we had just finished putting the little shelf unit together, and I had I was dying to get into the package, but I knew I had to help him since he went to Ikea and helped me buy it. So, anyway, there's Shirley the sheep. She's cute. So, thank you, Kathy. I really appreciate it. So now let me show you some of my other acquisitions. I've got some free yarn this week. It's been a fun week for shopping. First, and I just dropped more. What is it today with dropping yarn? There was a free table at work. And somebody was giving away yarn. Why would you give away yarn? This is old yarn, too. This is... Coates and Clark, which I don't even know if they're still in business. I mean, I know they, they were doing thread, but I'm looking at the label here, and it says Murphy's Mart. This was a dollar. No, this was a dollar forty-seven. Dollar forty-seven from Murphy's Mart. Now, Murphy's Mart was over here on the East Coast in Maryland, and Murphy's Mart went out of business in the 80s like the mid 80s so this is old yarn but it's actually very nice it's it is acrylic but it's really soft it is where did i see it this one's navy colored i know i saw the it was a red it's red heart it's coats and clark red heart luster sheen 100 percent creston acrylic fiber 
don't know what crest and acrylic fiber is. It's really soft and it's kind of like a fingering weight. But it's, it's, it was free. Who can complain? And here's a second skein of it. And then there was a skein of it in black. And then there was a skein of it in, and my sock yarn's trying to join in, in hot pink. Yeah. All of my socks are sitting down in front of me in a big heap with a big mess of yarn barf, and the rest of this yarn is joining in, and it, it's a mess in here today. So then I went to my yarn, my local yarn shop for knitting, and she tells us she's having Super Bowl, Super Bowl sales all week long. So here it is Tuesday night. So Bonnie and I jump up to go check out what's on sale, and she said, well, it's all the Noro yarn. I think it was 30 or 40 percent off. So this was normally like 10.99, and it was 30 or 40 percent off of that. I have two skeins of it, and that's pretty true to color. It's just got some browns and teals, and this is a 70% cotton, 30% silk. So this is going to be some things I'm going to knit with this summer. It is extremely soft, and it's kind of like that fabric that they, or the, the fiber that looks woven. I don't know if you can see it. You can see it a little bit. It kind of looks chained. There you can see it a little bit better. It's kind of like a woven, it's not plied, it's woven. Um, and it's very soft. So this is going to be some of my summer knitting. But at my yarn store, I just happened to, I didn't realize that my frequent flyer was getting ready to expire. You have to spend like $300 in a one year period. I didn't realize my one year period was coming up next week. By buying that, it put me up to the $300 limit. <laughs> so what that does is it means I, I get a whatever for, I get $25 for, for free. So. I'll be doing shopping next week. I already know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get, um, I bought some um, ancient fiber arts. Like earlier in the year, I bought two different skeins of it. I might buy another second skein to one of those. So, um, yeah. So anyway, free yarn there. Then I was going to... Um, I was I got my knit crate ordered. It they automatically charge you at the beginning of the month and then your your knit crate arrives like midway through the month. So they charged me as of February 1st, which was 2 days ago. Well, every time they charge your account, you get what they call stash points, and when you build up enough stash points, you can cash those in. Well, I have enough stash points for a $25 something for free again. So I got a skein of yarn from there and a, um, a needle gauge because the needle gauge I have is really old and I'm not even sure if some of it's accurate because it doesn't have millimeters on it or anything. It just has U.S. sizes and I'm not even sure where I got it from so I'm not sure how old it is. Um, so anyway, yes, so I got those. They have not arrived yet. So I have both of those coming and I purchased something from Craftsy, because Craftsy was running like a 50% off sale, like a flash sale, and I got some yarn. If you remember last week, I was talking about this really pretty teal color that somebody in my knit group had. Well, I was browsing around Craftsy and found some of their, um, some of their yarn was on sale for like $2 and something. It wasn't even quite 3 It was almost $3 a skein, but so I bought like three or four skeins of it so I could make another uh, Keeping You in Stitches shawl, but I want to make it all in one solid color. And I got it in teal. So anyway, hopefully those will be in next week and I'll be able to show them to you. So that is it for this week. Like I said, um, don't forget to enter your items into the sock along and be watching for a midweek post of what my my works in progress storage system is and uh, once I get that up and running and organized and get the room cleaned up a little bit so you don't think I'm an absolutely horrible housekeeper and I guess that's it for this week so anyway I will talk to you later and I hope you have a wonderful week 
And if you have not subscribed yet, please click the little red button below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again later. Bye, everybody.